If you were to go to Antarctica or Greenland and you looked around, it would kind of look flat and white and boring. But what you're standing on is up to two miles of ice, and that ice flows and it deforms, and it's also hiding all sorts of amazing things. This is a 180. Robin Bell is a geophysicist who has journeyed to the polar regions more than two dozen times. We know our planet is changing. We know the planet's warmer than it used to be. And we know that it's human caused. And we know the ice sheets are changing. My science is after how fast it's going to change. And how is that going to impact communities right up the river here, the communities that got flooded in Sandy. What does it mean for how they should rebuild? What does it mean on where we should put new infrastructure? To try to answer these questions, Bell and her team use cutting-edge technology to gather data from the most remote areas of Antarctica and beyond. The ice pod is our new instrument that we're just about to take on its first expedition that lets us look at the surface of the ice sheet, the structure inside, and then measure what's at the bottom. Belle first realized she wanted to be a scientist when she was a little girl growing up in New Hampshire. We'd go over to our neighbors and watch the Jacques Cousteau specials, and just the whole idea that you could explore this hidden world was something that I just found compelling. So it was really that inspiration of seeing that there are frontiers left to be explored on our planet. Belle followed her dream and went on to do her graduate studies at Columbia University's Lamont Doherty Earth Observatory. There she found a community she wasn't expecting. There were a lot of young women scientists who were coming in and trying to start their career. And one of the marvelous things was the sort of peer mentoring that happened. Bell has been at Columbia ever since. And while her work takes her to the edges of the Earth, Kenneth Lacovera, a paleontologist at Rowan University in New Jersey, is focused on work that's a bit closer to home. Most people do not realize that New Jersey is the cradle of dinosaur paleontology. Lacovera spends a lot of his time at this quarry right behind a shopping mall in Mantua Township, New Jersey. The site is a window into the Cretaceous period. That's the last time of the age of the dinosaurs. And it's right at this time the dinosaurs are doing great. And then a meteor hits the Earth 66 million years ago, wipes out about 75% of all species on the planet. And what we think we have recorded at this site is that moment in time. So my students and volunteers are excavating a bone bed of fossils. They're going very, very carefully in a painstaking way, meter by meter, essentially doing what people know as CSI, right? We're processing a death scene here, and we're getting some amazing data Lacovera has traveled the world digging for clues to the past. His biggest discovery was back in 2005, while on an expedition in southern Patagonia in Argentina. I found a giant, almost seven foot long femur, a thigh bone of a big plant-eating dinosaur. This turned out to be the, the first bone we discovered out of 145 of what would become a new species of giant plant-eating dinosaur, which we named Dreadnoughtus. Science wasn't something Lacovera grew up with. His father was a carpenter, and neither of his parents finished high school. But he can still remember the moment he was inspired to be a scientist. I was in about second grade. A woman came into my Cub Scout meeting with this box of rocks and fossils. I was unbelievably excited by that. The next day, I wrote a little essay in school about igneous, metamorphic, and sedimentary rocks and why sedimentary rocks were the best, and that's because you can find fossils in them. And so from that point on, that's what I wanted to do. Many scientists like Lacovera know what they want to do from a very early age. But for others, the path is less straightforward. Growing up, Jill Barganetti always liked science but she also loved to dance. And she thought she'd pursue it professionally until several professors in college recognized that she had a gift for science. They told me to apply to graduate school and I kept telling them, no, I'm a dancer. And they put the application in front of me and the next thing I knew, I got accepted to graduate school. Barganetti followed their advice. She's now a molecular biologist at Hunter College, 
where she's focusing on finding ways to treat breast cancer using the precision medicine approach. For example, triple negative breast cancer is very hard to treat, and there's no targeted drug for triple negative breast cancer. We think that our research will change that. Now we have all our chromosomes lined up. Now Barganetti has the best of both worlds. When she's not in the lab, Barganetti teaches this course called Choreographing Genomics. There's actually something pulling you. They each have to pick a cancer gene and express what's going wrong, but they only get to do that after they understand the basics of molecular biology. And she hopes to inspire and mentor young people who take an interest in science. As a young student, I didn't realize that I was going to be a scientist. So it was those people, you know, taking an interest and pushing me. And if it weren't for those people, I don't think I'd be here today. As for Robin Bell, she mentors young scientists because she says it's important for our future on this Earth. I want them to be the next generation who can step up and do the kind of science, or they're going to come up with a better way to do it than I will. And Kenneth Lacovera wants to demystify science. So one day a year, the public is invited to dig for fossils at the quarry. What they see is that, well, it looks like science is done by people. Those things are going to be done by somebody, those discoveries. That space probe is going to be made by somebody. That dinosaur is going to be found by somebody. So why couldn't it be you?